It's the Lockdown Flyers podcast for Wednesday, August 9th. Your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content. I was wondering how the Flyers are going to approach the trade deadline this season. That's a good question. We're going to discuss that strategy, some selling options, plus your mailbag questions all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are on Instagram and threads and blue sky at locked on flyers as well. Go to birdgogs.com slash locked on NHL and enter the promo code locked on NHL for a free white tech hat with any order. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. You can subscribe or follow us for free over on YouTube or on the Sirius XM app, anywhere you listen to podcasts to get the latest locked on flyers episode as soon as it's available here on the locked on podcast network your team every day. Russ, uh, in the last week or so, the Phantoms have continued to fill out their roster a little bit. I think these guys are going to be borderline Phantoms Redding players. Uh, They got a couple depth defensemen in Darren Brady and Coltrane Wilson. Um, Very cool name, by the way. Oh, yeah. Coltrane's a good one. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But uh, they are both players that have kind of split time between the ECHL and the AHL over the past couple of years. But it's always good to have some extra depth defensemen um, in the system that you can call up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, these these guys, like you said, they're they're borderline guys and they're fine to have have around. They're not going to be big, you know, players for anything. So. As far as for the fan, <laughs> they're not going to be big names for them, but that's okay. Like you said, it's always good to have depth. Yep. Plus a, a left winger in Evan Pillay, who played the last couple seasons with the Manitoba Moose. And he's mm. more of an AHL guy than the other two. Um, he's, you know, played for Cleveland, San Antonio, Bakersfield. Um, he's definitely a solid AHL veteran, has 234 career games total uh definitely one of the rough and tumble guys he's got 406 penalty yeah. minutes total over that career yeah i mean again i'm not sure why they're still getting guys like this honestly but whatever yep you know as long as they're not getting in the way of prospects that is the important right. thing here that we are gonna pay attention to with um the phantoms roster but uh, the main topic for today's show is the trade deadline for this upcoming season. And I know it's a little ways down the pike, right? But I feel like it's something that you have to think about going into this season, because how are you approaching this rebuild? Because we've already done like the initial beginnings of the teardown, right? And so kind of this is going to be part of year two of a rebuild, which is you're continuing to tear down a little bit, but you're really starting to plan a little bit more for the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's you want to get some more assets and you want to get the right pieces in place. But how do you start doing that? It's not just tear everything down. There's a little more thought behind it, right? Yeah, there's there's, there's a strategy um, based on what somebody's contract is at. What do you think you can get the next contract at? Where the cap is at? Where the team is at? Where, um, you know, your salary is going to be for the next three years? Um, even if you include in what you think you might get as far as um, extra cap money, you got to figure all that ahead of time. You can't just sort of do it as it comes because if you do, it's, it's never going to piece in. Right. I mean, teams that just sort of do it haphazardly, they, it doesn't work out for them. So yeah, you have to have it carefully mapped out. Uh, You should have already spoken to players and have an idea of who's extending, who isn't. And then, you know, you know, who you're going to trade at the deadline this year, you know, who you're going to trade maybe over the summer. You should know these things already. Yeah. And you have to know, like, what is your um, minimum you're wanting to accept in return for that player? Yeah. Right. 
and you have to say, okay, what kind of stats do they need to achieve this year in order for me to, for me to get maximum value at it? So maybe you push something from trade deadline to off season. If you feel like the stats aren't there to get yes. the return that you want or the market isn't what it is. So it's all moving pieces and parts, but I do think, you know, we do have to have a strategy in, in place here and have clear criteria for how you're going to make these decisions. Yeah. I mean, you, you might move somebody to a second line if you feel like they could do better, get more points, mm -hmm. get more value. You definitely should look at a few of those things. It usually doesn't upset or hurt the team, but it also can benefit you in the end. So I think those kinds of things are important. It, it's just, you know, you can always tell the teams that don't have the foresight and um, that's the thing that they have a chance to now start to gain is that, is that, and, and really sort of be able to look down the road. They, they really should already know barring injury uh, in two or three years, who their core players are. Uh, based on drafting and everything else. If they don't, then they have a problem. Yeah, I think so. I think that's really the approach. And, you know, I hate to bring up the Arizona Coyotes as a team that gets it wrong, but they are a team that gets it wrong with this. All the because time. All the time. And, and we see in this offseason as well, like they just signed Matt Dumba, right? That's obviously a trade deadline flip yes. right there's like no way around it but yeah are he they wanted to make a max salary this year that he couldn't get mm -hmm. anywhere else so he goes there he knows he's going to put up some numbers and he will get traded yes right but are the coyotes going to get the right return for him and make use of that return probably not i no, guess probably say. not because that's been the pattern with them and so we don't want like the flyers to get into that sort of mode and um, so I guess like then the next question is for this trade deadline, will anybody, you know, uh, anybody doesn't have a no trade clause in their contract, but like, will anybody be on the table or are there going to be players that they're committed to keeping through this rebuild? I think there'll be a few, um, you know, if I had to give you a number, you know, maybe three or four, that's it. And that'll count yeah. ones that they can't move either. But there shouldn't be much more than that because, again, you have players on the way. You have Michkov on the way. You have Gauthier on the way. So you're looking at those players. You have Bonk on the way. So, you know, you're looking three years down the line to start to get some of them. And so based on that, I now can, you know, shift around some of these other players and some of these other players may be a little past it, maybe in three years if Couturier's playing the whole time, you could trade him at that time. You know, that's you have to sort of look at all of that. Yeah. And I think the other question that the Flyers need to answer is when they're looking at return for these guys, are they looking for players? Are they looking for picks? Are they looking for a combination of both? And so how, how are they going to approach getting the maximum in return? No, I think that's when, you know, you're, when you're starting to shop around, uh, there may be certain players that are only going to get picks and there may be players that will get players and you're just going to have to figure out based on the market who that is. Um, you know, someone like Chuck Fletcher didn't do a very good job of gauging the market no. for that. So that is true. You have to hope they would, could do a better job and and figure that out. But sometimes it's unpredictable, too. We can't always blame everything on the GM. Sometimes the market is what the market is. Sometimes. Uh, you know, salary caps are tight. If the cap doesn't go up nine million in a couple of years and it only goes up five, that'll change the market. You know, so you don't know when other outside things are going to change it a little bit. Yeah. And obviously we will have some clue, I think, by trade deadline what the cap is going to look like, but it won't be locked down until next off season. So right. It's going to be a little hard to make those predictions, but at the same time, you have to like make your best educated guess of it, right? Well, you have to make projections. Like when I was in the hotel field, uh, we would look at booking rooms and how many rooms would be booked throughout the year, and you had to make sales projections. So even though I might be doing this exercise in July, I had to give a report what it would look like you know, through the rest of the year. So you have yep. to do that. So you have to do that with this too. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a lot of options on the table. Like you said, there's maybe only three or four guys that you're like, no, I don't want to trade them no matter what. Uh, and obviously different guys in different contract scenarios. So we're going to go through individually those players and what maybe 
we'd want in return from them coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. I look better and feel great wearing Bird Dog shorts and pants. They're stretchy fabric, make my legs look great, and they're definitely comfier than my other shorts and pants. They give me freedom to wear one pair of shorts <clears throat> no matter if I'm doing yard work, playing golf, or playing you know softball all day and then driving home because I did that recently too. Uh, the khaki, the cloud knit fabric looks great, just like the khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit. Uh, without having to sacrifice movement, plus Bird Dogs use anti-sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Bird Dog shorts are perfect for the day, and when you're going to, you know, again, tailgate or going to a concert, they're really, really good. Go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNHL and enter promo code LockedOnNHL for a free white tech hat with your order. That's birddogs.com slash LockedOnNHL for a free white tech hat. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off, we promise you. On Friday's show, we are going to talk about the results of this week's summer poll question on who the locks might be to make the Flyers opening night roster. Some interesting results so far, but we still want all of your votes. So if you had not done that, go and, uh, and get your voice heard. The link to that will be in the show notes. Getting back to our conversation on this upcoming year's trade deadline and what the options are, I think there's really like two categories of players. There's players who will definitely be UFAs, and then there's everybody else that you have to like think a little bit harder or work a little bit harder what the deal might be, um, including some RFAs, so that you know the receiving team will be required to to give them like a one year deal after that or or give them a qualified offer, but. For the UFA options, I do actually think, you know, the Flyers are in a good position here because I think by, you know, including Sean Walker in the Pro-V deal, you know, back from L.A. Um, and signing Ryan Paling and Mark Stahl, all three of those guys could be really good potential UFA trade at the deadline, even if it's for late round picks. Um, depending on how they do this season, I, I think that you know it, it's really a, a high potential that one of them could get at least some return. Yeah, I think you know you might be able to get like if Walker had a really really good year, you could get a late second for him. Stall, you could definitely get a third. Paling, it really depends. Uh, hard to put a gauge on that one right now, but I would say uh, if he had a really yeah. good year, probably a third. Um, Probably should take. Nick I think Steeler. he's the the most unpredictable in yes. terms of what the results could be, and so it will really be more stats dependent. Where I think like Stahl obviously just has a reputation that it doesn't really matter what his numbers are; people know what they're getting with him. Yes, I think Sean Walker. There's a little bit of that too. Yeah, but... he's the one with the most upside because defense is is a position where if he shows some offensive uh, ability there, and people think they could use him in the playoffs, that you'll get the most for that so that's why i kind of look at walker for that and you might as well take nick sealer off the board because they will re-sign nick sealer for as long as john tortorell is there so he's off the table you think so i do because uh, i mean i don't know that there's a market for nick sealer let's say especially when you have like stall and walker there as ufa options i think that's really what it is that if somebody is going to be trading for a flyers defenseman at deadline it's going to be one of those two and and not Nick so. Sealer just because of the packing order but not because of Tortorella no it's going to be because of that too uh he is not going to you know he's going to put his word in and say listen we could really use him going forward he's only 30 I could see them giving him a two-year deal if he has another year like last year I wouldn't do it I'm just telling you I think he would do it and I think there's a chance that Briere would do it so I would take him off the market and uh, Luzinski, you know, you're not going to get a lot, but no. if he were to, you know, play on the fourth line all year, you know, you might be able to get like a fourth rounder for him. So it depends if he could do that or not. Yeah, I think you're right with Luzinski that, um, it'll depend on his playing time and yes. how he, you know, acquits himself out there on the ice. I'm not sure he's going to get the playing time, uh, but I think that he is kind of one of those disposable guys. You never know, right? Though. With injury and such, yeah. what might happen, the opportunity could be there that you didn't expect. Yeah. 
I think so. But as far as like the guys that are going to be UFAs at the end of next season, so they're short term rentals. Yeah, I'd got to I got to say stall is probably the the most likely to be dealt. Yeah, I think he's the most likely for sure. Uh, but I think Walker will get dealt, too. Yeah, and I, I think that'd be that'd be good for the Flyers, regardless, and mm-hmm. uh, and gets if we can get some more picks for this upcoming draft, I think that would be great as well. Um, looking at some other options, I think you know we'll get into the RFA options in a sec, but I I think like obviously the biggest fish is going to be Travis Konechny, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's I no just question he's wonder. The one. Yeah, I just wonder like. What is does he have to have like 40, 50 points by trade deadline in order to get top return for him? Or is it going to be a scenario where teams are just like not going to budge and Danny Rare will take what he can get for him and have to just make the call? No, I think I think he has to play the majority of the games before the deadline. I think he has to have like 20 something goals before the deadline if he could do that and be in that 45 point range before the deadline or 40 point range and knowing that he's going to get like 60 on the year and maybe 30 goals then you know then you're talking about like probably a conditional first depending on the team if they have one or you know a second and maybe a conditional first for the years after draft like that's the thing Again, you may want to say as a Flyers fan, well, I want, you know, I want a first in this draft. That's great. But teams interested in him may not have that. So that's where, you know, Briere may not be able to do much as far as that goes. So, but a first is a first no matter what year it is. So you have to just focus on that. Get that and try and yep. get a player. For connecting, you should be able to get a player. Yeah, I think so too. I think if you can get a solid player and a high pick, even if it is in a future draft, Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. I mean, because this upcoming draft, we have uh, our our first and the conditional first from Florida. Um, You know, if they could get a second rounder in there, they would have to add a lot additional onto the return, right? If if we're just getting a second. But, you know, to get a second first round pick um, in the following draft, when now you're getting close to Cutter Gautier and Matt Vay Mitchkov coming in time, I mean, that's just bonus right yes. there. So I, I think Plus it's they have fine. that other one, which I forget what was it like for 2025 or six, right? Um, they no, they don't have a, a pick there, they just have the Florida one, just the Florida one. Okay, I thought there was another one. So, but the Florida is probably top 10 protected, I'm sure, and yeah. this year could be tough for them with all those players injured at the beginning. So yeah, it's not a guarantee they're going to get to use that one. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see, but I do think he's definitely the big fish of the other players and and the most likely to get traded. Um, Other options on non-expiring contracts are Scott Lawton and Garnett Hathaway. Yeah. I don't think Hathaway is going anywhere that quick. Uh, I think they'll want to have him around. Lawton, it'll depend on how he's doing, what his future role is. Like, if they're going to make him a captain, obviously he's going to be staying. If they're not going to make him a captain, then maybe he he will go at that point. But, like, that's something where I feel like John Torello needs to make a decision on. And you can't keep going through these seasons and not naming a guy captain because I do think uh, you want fans to kind of have a captain on the team. You want players to. You want that guy to be out there to talk to the refs. I think at some point you have to name that. And and really it should be named mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, I think so. I, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Just because Tortorella said he's not going to name a captain this year, but maybe there's a reason for it to come up. Maybe there's a sales and marketing reason for it to come right. up. You know, maybe it That'll, changes, right. You know. Maybe it changes. Maybe you know, if for some reason you see Sean Couturier is not going to be the player he's going to be and you were holding it out for him, you say, all right, you know what? Now we can make a decision and we'll give it to Scott because, you know, we can't give it to Sean because we don't know how long his career will be. Something like that. You know, if it's yeah. that situation, that's what you then you make those decisions because you do need it for marketing. Yeah. I mean, you can make a whole night out of it with, uh, you know, the captaining ceremony, whatever yeah. the word is for that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, 
as far as you know the other remaining guys that are rfas i think obviously the elephant in the room there is carter hart yeah yeah i i think there's two issues so if there's a loss of time for hart then his value goes down and then if his value goes down do you want to trade him but then hart i think does have a little power over where he can be traded right contract wise so yeah he there may not be teams that he wants to go to and that could be the other fly in the ointment where you almost have to walk him to unrestricted free agency just because he doesn't want to go anywhere and just wants to see what's you know what happens so all those scenarios exist but it'll definitely be talked about yeah i think that's really the question is obviously like we've talked about on the show uh, previously is that until this hockey Canada thing is resolved, there's so many question marks in the air and you can't really make a determination. Now, after that, you'll have your answer and then you can kind of go from there in terms of trade potential. How much does his go down at that point? You know, if it's a trade deadline thing and a suspension or something happens where he's you know allowed to play, that's a whole other ball game. So yeah, I, I don't know. I think it'll be, um, I, I think that'll be a giant question mark and we'll have to see how the other goaltenders are playing at that point too, to see mm-hmm. what the risk factor is there. I think, you know, it's, it'll be for him. It'll be how other players are doing. That'll be a bigger factor than I think for any other potential, you know, guy to trade at the deadline. Right. No, that's fair. So, and then, you know, your other smaller options i think owen tippett who will be rfa they're keeping him through i mean yeah they'll no keep question. him at this point so i don't think there's an issue there and then wade allison who you know again i think similar to lazinski how much will he play and how well does he play? yeah that's it's a big key for him uh if he plays as much as he played last year there's decent value there if he plays less the value drops a lot if he plays more then you know the value goes up because I really don't know. I can't tell you if he's in their future plans or not. I really don't have a feel for that yet. No, I don't either. But, you know, to me, he's like a fourth round pick in return. Yeah. Thereabouts. Mm-hmm. Um, unless it's a prospect for prospect kind of a right. trade situation for new change of scenery kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's kind of where we're looking with Wade Allison, but yeah, a lot of questions and a lot of planning for the flyers to do heading into, um, you know, the, the season coming up. Uh, In the meantime, we've got your mailbag questions coming up next. Russ, our first mailbag question um, kind of relates to the conversation we just had about Carter Hart and that we had a lot of comments over on YouTube about about Carter Hart and what is the return on a Carter Hart trade? And like, you kind of have to look at it um, from a, does he get suspended versus does he not get suspended? And I think that's where the value change happens, right? Yeah. So if, if he were to lose some time this year from suspension, uh, I think you would get a second and a third and the third might be from a, a, a different year, probably wouldn't mm-hmm. be from this year. And I think, that's maybe all you could expect because again, he will have missed time. You have to negotiate a new deal with him the next year. And then you get, then that's it. Like that's it. he hits the street unless you, you know, he wants to play for you. So I think that's it. If nothing happens, doesn't miss any time, maybe a conditional first and a, and a third. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that's the, the difference in the upside there. And you might get them in the same year. You might. Um, it all depends on the team. But then then I think there's a chance. And that's it. Because, again, yep. still that team's going to have to negotiate with them. Yeah. Uh, our next question comes from Joel. And he uh, watches slashes listens to the show from Europe. So thanks for, uh, for doing that, Joel. Yeah, and we appreciate has, it. That's a good uh, point about Emil Andre. We talked about you know him potentially going back to Sweden if he doesn't make the flyers. So he says, I know there's been a lot of doubt whether Emil Andre would go back to HD 71. If he doesn't make the flyers in theory, the SHL club could enforce that contract uh, and bring him back. But 
Um, I'm certain that Swedish clubs would have a good, would want to have a good relationship with their players in case they want to do a few final years at the end of the contract as a matter of good faith would then they just let him go for the early part of his career. I mean, I'm just going to go and this is, you know, maybe yeah, Joel could have a debate, but on off the post, Ufe Bowden felt like if he's not making the flyers, they're going to ask for him back and, and get him back. So, because they hold a hammer there, that's the yeah. feeling right now. And I don't see that changing. I think it's right. And it's not going to hurt his development. Like we said, I understand those other things. It's all, they're all niceties, but they want to win too. And if they could get a meal Andre in their lineup, it's hard to, it's hard for them to just justify and say, well, we're not going to put him in our lineup and he's playing in the AHL. Like, you know, the GM's going to look at that and be like, no, 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 no. He's better than three other guys that we got playing here. Let's get him back. So I think that one's up to the Flyers. If he makes the team, then he's going to stay here. If not, they're probably going to call him back. Man, I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I I don't think he will be hurt in his development no. regardless. So I think we're good there. So um, I, I, that's all I care about in the grand scheme of things. Uh, Ryan uh, wanted to know about a trade rumor that was out there about sending Cal Peterson and Sean Couturier or Scott Lawton to Boston in exchange for Jeremy Swayman and uh, Georgie Merkulov, who's a AHL slash NHL level forward. Right. And, and I don't know. That just it seems kind of lopsided to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that one's going to happen. I'll be honest. I, I don't think that one sounds right. And just the fact that they set a price for Swayman, why are they now trading him? I don't see it. Yeah, I think if maybe it was before arbitration, yes, they would have thought about it. But um, I think the fact that they went through all that and, and got a deal for Swayman, I just don't see him going anywhere. Um, uh, you know, uh, unless it was Carter Hart in return <laughs> and, right. and not and not Cal Peterson. I think that's really right. the difference for Boston there. And now I'm just thinking about Carter Hart on Boston and getting upset about it. But yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Nina had a question about Quentin Byfield, who I also really love as a prospect. Mm -hmm. uh, Nina wants to know, I realize he's been hurt part of the last two seasons, but what would it take to bring him here on a trade? Would Carter Hart be enough? Which is wild to think about that one for one deal, which I don't think that it would sense, not be but, enough um, yeah. because, you know, Byfield is still young and still yeah. could be a first or second line center. So the uh, and again, with Hart, they'd have to negotiate a deal after the year after. So mm -hmm. I think you would have to do Carter Hart and you'd have to either give them a first or you'd have to give them a good prospect, like a, at least a B level prospect. So I think that's what it would take. Uh, I don't think they would really do that, but I guess if he had a mediocre year this year, they might consider it because right now yeah. I still think they really plan on keeping him, but I wouldn't close the door on it. Yeah, I think part of the problem, too, is that the Kings, like, they have a first-round draft pick in this upcoming draft. They do not have a second-rounder or a third-rounder. So it's, you know, unless they acquired one in some right. other way first, um, we would have to get a first-rounder back for a pick in this year's draft. And I just don't see the Flyers going in return if if it's, you know, picks involved, right? Like, I, I just don't see how it, it would work if Carter Hart's involved, because we would have to get a lot more in return than just Quentin Byfield. No, I disagree. I think it's the other way around. I think if you're just trading Hart, you got to add the sweetener, not, not them. You think? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Byfield. I don't know. Yeah. I think Byfield, that's where they're at. Now what they could do, um, if you went with my logic, what they could do is they could swap first round picks because conceivably the Kings will be, you know, a much lower pick and the Flyers a higher pick. So yeah, they might do that. They might consider yeah. that. But no, I think Byfield is is actually going to garner more in this deal. Yeah. Or like the, if you look at the Kings pick and the Florida pick, whichever one is higher, like yeah. the Kings, that one. Yeah. But I think, I think you're wrong. I don't think they're going to give up a first and Byfield. No way. 
No, I wouldn't say a first in Byfield. And even that's a, why even if I would say a like second, a second or a third. I don't even think they yeah. would do that. Interesting. I don't know. I think the Flyers would ask them to do that, but that is just me. All right. That will do it for today's show. Thanks so much for listening on Friday show. We are going to have a locked on crossover with our friends over at uh, locked on Columbus blue jackets, kind of get a handle on what their upcoming season will look like and what things look like in the division. So we're looking forward to that as well. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So if you've got a question you want answered on the show, you can tweet us at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail, or you can comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on the app formerly known as Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russell at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>